What's up, Renegade Nation? Before we begin the video, I'd like to give a big shout out to our most recent Patreon supporters. Tyler R., Matthew Hensley, Dimitru Ulicini, Nicholas Whittington, Wes Devil Zero, Craigan, CDJ Dragon, Chow Lao, Kumasan, Kaylee McRae, The Pokemon 52, Magnus Moeller, Joshua C. Arit, Stephen Sharp, Christopher, Daniel Hudson, Azuma, Obtuse and Chartreuse Mongoose, Anthony the Hedgehog, Malik Black, Ann Van Leeuwen, Barry Bearable, Jay Sick, Gabe Man Man, and Tyler J. Hart. Thank you all very much for your support. And as always, I'd like to give a big shout out to our producer, The Anime Hybrid. If you all want to support us on Patreon, feel free to click the link down below to find out more. We'll see you there. Space Wizards versus Ninjas. Sounds awesome on paper, but then all of a sudden you realize, oh wait, a space wizard has like black. Well, I know Obi Wan Kenobi doesn't use blasters. He has, but of course, as he, he would has, say, yeah. so uncivilized. Yes, yeah. So I finished Naruto. Nick has not. Now that is the reason why Nick is not here. Chad has tried to start Naruto twice and just can't get into it. I mean, I don't know if it's just a lot of times stuff just comes up. You know what I mean? I'll just stop watching shit. And plus, and for me, it's not that big of a deal. I can still watch stuff even after spoilers happen because I'm a you know I've been a fan of professional wrestling. Mm -hmm. So people do nothing but spoil what happens in that stuff oh, instantly God, as dude. soon as it happens. Yeah. If you just so happen to look on the internet and you're a wrestling fan, you will find out exactly what happened the moment it happens. You can't avoid it. No, you can't. So spoilers don't really keep me from enjoying stuff. That's about the so, same. It's par that's yeah. about the same for me. Me, I've just I when it comes to spoilers, I'm just like, eh? But at the same time, it's just it's I mean, just, it sucks always, but it's just not a um, deal breaker for me. Yeah, that's fair. Yeah. So, overall, we've, uh, you know, w we consider ourselves Star Wars fans. Oh, I love Star Wars. Yeah, Star Wars is like a mecca. It hasn't always loved me, but I love Star Wars. I'll say this much. Um, the, the most recent trilogy has left a bad taste in a lot of people's mouths. And I think we'll... You see... A lot of people say only time will tell to see if it, you know, if it's good or not. No, it's I not. don't think it will. And I think time will tell that that is going to be a mistake that gets covered up pretty soon. I, maybe, maybe. I, that stuff's already happening. <coughs> so. All I'm going to say is this. The whole thing with, with, with it is that, thankfully we have the Mandalorian. Which, you know, the people involved in that situation are also being now tasked with pretty much a lump sum of all the other stuff. And you know what? Good. Yeah. Because Dave Filoni is an awesome writer and director. Yeah. John Favreau is an awesome producer, writer, and director. From what I've been reading, they are now putting that guy in the recon and George Lucas and some other people in charge of reconstructing Luke Skywalker. Okay. Like building his legacy back up. Cause everybody feels like, what did you just do to Luke Skywalker? You well, know? well, yeah. And I don't want to go into a whole rant on this, Yeah, but let's just say we were not happy with the most recent, uh, incarnations of, of the star Wars films. Call us, call us petty fanboys if you want, but Honestly, it's our opinion to hold. And I'm Richard like Petty, it, dude. I'm I'm King Petty. You're Richard Kyle. I don't care to be petty. Sometimes you need to be petty about things. And then what? If they mean that much, then really, is it petty? If it's that big of a situation for you? It's not a petty thing to hold on to. That's, you know, how many years in investment? That's not petty. That's just like calling shit out that doesn't make sense. That, you know, I mean, it just, I don't think it's petty. 
No, I, well, you, nobody should I never feel said, ashamed. Well, of, I'm not of saying that it's petty. Position. I'm not yeah. saying it's petty, but hell, people are out there going to say, "Oh, you're just being petty because it what because it wasn't you know to your liking." It's like, yeah, and your point being, <laughs> right? And uh, like, of course. I mean, I didn't expect it to be perfect. I just expected it to be logical and have something Look, to it. They but, could they could have done all that stuff without shitting on Luke Skywalker. Period. Yeah, they could have. Could but, have done it. That was done for no reason. I mean, hell, even Sam Witwer, the voice actor for Darth Maul in uh, Star Wars Rebels and Star Wars Clone Wars, has come forward and said, yeah, it just, like, you took probably one of the most prolific characters who built himself up to be awesome and you completely, like, destroyed him out of spite for for some reason that makes no sense. No, I, and but, it, oh well. it is what it is. Now they're, they're wiping their own ass. So yeah. Good and, job. Yeah. With the receipts that their box office couldn't cash. And, um, well, Kaka- okay. So Obi-Wan Kenobi, we all know him. We all love him. And we all wish that Star Wars would just go ahead and produce the damn live action series already. You got friggin' you and McGregor coming back to play Obi-Wan. Come on. I heard it was canceled, man. They just need to just go ahead and produce it. I heard it's not going to happen. You know why? Because Kathleen Kennedy can't stop sticking her nose in business. I thought she's done. Like, she's a figurehead now. Zero power, just there. But but she did everything she could to kill it. Well. And as far as it... Dude, it, I saw something about her trying to produce a show. Like, she went ahead and had a bunch of media outlets put out there that it was greenlit. And, like, the boss at Disney had not didn't even know about it yeah did is that true i've heard about that and it got her in a lot of trouble oh my god could you imagine being that bullheaded and stupid (laughs) people are stupid dude oh my god and kakashi the uh who is naruto's instructor throughout the uh, throughout the vast majority of the franchise um and also at one point the hokage the leader of the Hidden Leaf Village. Mm-hmm. Uh, famous for his lightning attacks and being the only person outside of the... One of the only people outside of the Uchiha clan that has the Sharingan, the Red Eye. Uh, he's the Zapdos of Naruto. Effectively, yes. And he's also and he's also very talented and very, very cunning. And just a natural, nin- just a natural ninja. Just a natural at it. But they're doing a death battle... And uh, I guess we're going to see who going to win that death battle. So, without further ado, here we go. Heroes come in many different forms. Some are heroic protectors of justice, and others are the teachers who guide us toward a brighter future. And sometimes, they're both. Like Obi-Wan Kenobi, the Jedi Master of the Galactic Republic from Star Wars. And Kakashi Hatake, the sixth Hokage of the Hidden Leaf and mentor to Naruto. He's where's my boomstick? And it's our job to analyze their weapons, armor, and skills to find out who would win a, a death, death battle. battle. On the distant planet of Tatooine lived an elderly hermit known as Old Ben. His heart heavy with regret and stories to tell. Cause he wasn't just some crazy old goof. He used to be a badass samurai space wizard. Obi-Wan Sick. Kenobi. Now that's a name I've not heard in a, a long time. time. Ah, I love a good Obi One liner. Hello there. Ah. As a child, Kenobi <laughs> was inducted into the Jedi Order, warrior monks training in the Force over the course of their lives. And he was trained by the one and only Liam Neeson. Well, until he was murdered by Space Satan. Though not before they discovered a <laughs> Space of Satan in Obi Wan's future pupil, Anakin Skywalker. I have a bad feeling about this. Eventually, Kenobi rose to the top Damn ranks it, of the Order, becoming a Jedi Master. Just in time for two back-to-back galactic wars. Sounds like fun when you've got his ah, classic lightsaber, which can cut through basically anything with enough force. Get it? Including uh. the Duranium Armor of General Grievous, which can take volleys from Starfighter cannons. 
It's an elegant weapon for a more civilized That's age. crazy. Because, you know, mutilating and decapitating people left and right is way more honorable. Kenobi has studied seven hmm. forms of lightsaber combat and is the undisputed master of Form 3, Serace. Which is all about defense and waiting for your opponent to make a mistake to land a finishing blow. He's so skilled, he can beat Sith Lords in just seconds. But Kenobi's yeah, most that... powerful weapon, or better put, ally, is the Force. I'll say this much, that that the build-up for that battle with him and Darth Maul was awesome. But it should have gone on longer. I'm just going to be honest. The battle should have gone on longer. It exists almost everywhere. Jedi can tap into the Force to manipulate the world around them. Like throwing stuff around with telekinesis. Everything from pulling down an airship to crushing someone else's organs. While Kenobi prefers a more direct dueling approach, his power in the Force is nothing to scoff at. Many years after his time, he was explicitly compared to Jedi Knight Kip Dura, who could move a micro-singularity with a thought. Speaking of thoughts, he can mess with yours with the Jedi mind trick. Like if he wanted to, he could get jizz stuck in your head. Boom gross! What? It's a type of music! Those aliens in Jabba's palace were playing it. They're called jizz whalers. Huh. I bet Disney was real happy to learn about that one. <laughs> force abilities also include protective fields, illusions, and two to minus, a technique for absorbing and redirecting energy attacks. Even without a lightsaber. Oh, also, uh, he can see the future. To a certain extent, Jedi can glimpse the distant future through focused meditation. In battle, the Force can guide their movements, predicting danger in advance. Kind of like a space spidey sense. Exactly. With their incredible skill in the Force, Kenobi and Skywalker became a formidable duo. Obi-Wan ranked up even more and became a general. He's a badass space pilot who can dogfight at near light speed. According to an official Damn. novel, he can even react down to the nanosecond. I don't know, Wiz. I've seen the movies, and Jedi have never done shit like that. Well, other mediums have greatly expanded upon Jedi capabilities. Some are even powerful enough to hold together entire planets. Obi-Wan has fought an army Jesus. while blindfolded, endured a blast from a starfighter, and battled the Sith Anakin Sky... Uh, I mean, Darth, Darth Vader. Vader. That's when he had to break out his most OP move of all, the high ground. <laughs> By standing just a few feet above an opponent, Obi-Wan gains Sun enormous Sun. extra powerfulness. He even warns you about it. Jabba Anakin, I have the high ground. It's Sun Tzu, dude. It's basic uh, art exactly. of war. Remember how Darth Maul had the high ground way back when? Against Obi-Wan himself? Where do you think he learned such an awesome move? Only Sith Satan could think of something so deadly. Uh-huh. Either way, Obi-Wan sadly failed where it mattered most. Ooh, that's definitely gonna be an F on the old Jedi report card. See me after the class for an dude. epic boss no. battle on a lava planet. But defeating his fallen student is no small feat. Anakin could telekinetically move starships fast enough to intercept hypersonic missiles. Based on the scale of this dreadnought and the distance it moved, this would need an energy over 21 megatons of TNT. Damn. That was when he was a newbie. He basically became the most powerful Jedi and Sith in space wizard history. However, Kenobi is extremely dedicated to his strict Jedi code, potentially to a fault. It's debatable if he ever learned from this mistake. After all, he told Luke Skywalker that the only way to ever become a Jedi would be to kill his own father. And he even tried to trick him into never figuring out that fact in the first place. Dick move, Obi. Dick move. But even in his worst moments, Obi-Wan Kenobi always fought for the sake of others. He would battle his Dark Apprentice one last time, sacrificing his life in service of a new hope. And then he became a ghost! Don't ruin the moment. Strike me down, I shall become more powerful, powerful than you can possibly imagine. Shinobi, Hokage, mentor, friend, and porn addict. Kakashi yes. is <laughs> all of these, and generally a pretty relaxed guy for someone raised as a ninja assassin. You wouldn't know it at first glance that his childhood sucked balls. They like can. his dad committed seppuku because he saved his friends instead of prioritizing a mission. In the shadow of disgrace, this cruel methodology of the ninja and his father's great mistake tore young Kakashi apart. Reminds me of my dad. What was his great mistake? He called it Boomstick. Oh. <clears throat> Despite his hardship, Kakashi proved himself a prodigy, becoming a Genin at age 5, a Chunin at age 6, and a Jonin at age 12. 
For those of us who don't speak anime, he might as well have been doing ninja rocket science in the womb. He quickly mastered the use of chakra, a form of spiritual energy within all individuals that ninja can shape and weaponize. This is ninjutsu. He can walk up walls, heal wounds, and even make clones of himself. Plus, mm -hmm. he's a master of taijutsu, aka punching people. But his deadliest technique of all is, is the 1,000 years of death. Oh no! The village secret finger jutsu. No! A thousand years of death. Oh, ho, ho, that's gonna get you on a list. Naruto's like 12. Chakra can also be molded into nature itself, and Kakashi can use it for numerous elemental attacks. Sure, he can shoot fireballs or dunk you with water, but his favorite is lightning. Lightning zaps, lightning clones, lightning dogs? Yep. That's awesome! How do I get one of those? He's even invented a lightning ninjutsu technique, the Chidori. Or the right here. electric chakra into his hand or a kunai, he becomes capable of piercing just about anything. Even a bolt of actual lightning! Take that, nature! Man triumphs over you once again! This is where Kakashi's own Chidori got its moniker, Raikiri, yes. Lightning Cutter. Ooh, now I know what I'm gonna name my lightning dog. The Chidori does have a downside, though. Its speed and power are so great, they give the user tunnel vision and make the attack generally uncontrollable. Basically, once you kick on the gas, you're zooming straight ahead, no matter what happens. Although, Kakashi I just the thing to fix it. Long story short, he was drafted into a war alongside his friends Rin and Obito. Jit went down and Kakashi lost an eye, so Obito handed over one of his when he decided to sacrifice his life. Holy shit! Why don't I have any friends like that? Please give me your eye! No! I'll give it back, I promise! Obito's eye wasn't an ordinary eye. He was in Uchiha, and this was a Sharingan. With his Sharingan, Kakashi not only got some control over his Chidori, but he can see a person's chakra, predict their movements, dupe your brain with genjutsu, and even copy jutsu techniques. He's such a filthy plagiarist that he's stolen over 1,000 jutsus in 14 years. Although the copy since Kakashi ninja. is not yep. in Uchiha, he can't exactly turn the Sharingan off. And then Reen jumped in front of his Raikiri and kicked the bucket too. Man, this guy can't catch a break. And yet, unimaginable loss is exactly what is needed to unlock the Sharingan's next stage. The Mungekyo Sharingan. Oh yep. yeah! With the Mankey Eye, he can cast Kamui, basically sucking objects or people into another dimension. Sure, it uses up a lot of his chakra pool, but it's a pretty clever instant win move. The concept yes. of trauma granting new power fascinates me. So, I've stolen Boomstick's entire beer hoard and placed it in a secure room with 200 tons of TNT. <laughs> Wait, what? Oh! You monster! What have you done? Do you feel anything? Just thirsty, sober, and punchy. P punchy? <laughs> Par for the Next course. Rounds on whiz. <laughs> well, for Kakashi, everything sort of worked out in the end. He became a teacher, and this new generation of ninja helped him learn that his dad was right all along. Friends do come first, unless they blow up all your beer. Wake up! Oh, uh, he's held his own against top-tier ninja like Zabuza, Pain, and even his old friend Obito. Back from the dead and evil now, because why not? Kakashi can definitely compare to fellow ninja master Jiraiya, Jiraiya who can blow yeah. up mountains. That takes over 18 megatons of TNT. And he's caught and sliced lightning. Based on the distance it moved before he caught it, he must have reacted within 70 microseconds and moved over 2,000 times the speed of sound. Sounds like ninja president material to me. Not too shabby for a guy who likes to read porn in public. <laughs> that because he totally does. Yes, he does. Sharingan is nothing. Written by Jiraiya. Oh, God. The Makeout series. Jesus Christ. If not full of surprises. Right now, all I can give you is just death. All right, the combatants are set, and we've run the data through all possibilities. But first, you know what's the best friend for teachers like these two? Beer! This episode of Death Battle is super special because it's sponsored by my favorite beer, Miller Lite. Really? It's connecting. Death. Yinling, dude. I know yours is like Yenling and Modelo. And I mean, I like a bunch of different beer, but Miller Lite. I don't know. I do know some people that like some Miller Lite, though. I like Bud Platinum. Yeah. I don't know about that. I'm more of a liquor man myself. Yeah, I like Jack and Coke, but when it comes and to... And you uh, like that Fireball, too. Oh, and I will be drinking that with White Claw. Oh, God. 
Oh, uh, Fireball and White Claw. And Evan Williams and Jack Daniels. You, can call it, you know what you can call it? Uh, the Fireball chased with a White Claw? Fire Claw. Yeah. I was wondering if you were going to get it. Fire Claw. Yeah. I like it. Battle! Okay. So, based on everything you've seen, who you got? I know. I probably know what it's going to be. But if I know anything, <coughs> it's the perverts in anime are always too overpowered. You think? Oh, wait. You're right. Issei from uh, High School DXD. I, I mean, I think... I, I I know he's like, like Master Roshi, dude. <laughs> you know, he is overpowered, big time. He's the turtle hermit, dude. Um. Oh, that that shirt idea that you had, I'm actually working on it. Yeah, dude, I have squad. to have that shirt, squad. Absolutely. Still recovering. Still recovering. But, yeah. So, you think Kakashi's going to win? I'm going Obi-Wan, but I don't, I don't know if he has that much of a chance. I actually... I'm pulling for... I'm pulling for Obi-Wan as well, and here's my reason. I mean... The light, the like, Kakashi's Raikiri can do a lot against a bolt of lightning, but a lightsaber? I mean, that'd be a hell, that's a hell of a duel. That's a hell of a weapon. Yes. I mean, you're right, but I don't know, man. We'll see. Yeah, we'll, we will have to see. Anyway, Obi-Wan Kenobi versus Kakashi. Here we go. I say the graphics on this actually are pretty damn good. Yeah. The happy landing. Huh? Hello there. Hold it. You're in Konoha territory. I have some questions if you'll come with me. You want to go home and keep reading your book. I want to go home and keep reading my book. After I kick your ass. Uh oh. Incoming. Stratagem we ninja know. One thousand years of death. Don't try it. I have the high ground. Oh. Oh. <laughs> I guess I have the high ground. Oh, I don't think so. Genjutsu. Be mindful of your thoughts, Obi Wan. They betray you. Damn. Damn. Good shit. Oh! 
Substitution Jutsu? Oh no, Lightning Clone. Mangekyo. Oh no. Don't give up. Trust in the force. Oh no. Him. So uncivilized. <laughs> KO! Well, he wow. may have been able to beat Obi 2, but he just couldn't handle Obi 1. <laughs> Got him. Kakashi's wide array of moves certainly kept Kenobi on his toes, but the Jedi's arsenal was far more powerful and versatile than you might think. Yeah, like how Chakra is an internal life energy with a limited supply, but the Force is external and everywhere. Obi-Wan couldn't exactly run out of it, and Kakashi couldn't copy Force techniques. Because, I mean, he's using external force, not internal chakra. Totally different. As for brute power, mm. Ninja Mountain Busting and Anakin's Dreadnought Telekinesis were fairly comparable. However, Kenobi matched Anakin's force power well after he had become far stronger than that. This is the chosen one we're talking about here. Other Jedi have done some crazy stuff, like throwing a fleet of Star Destroyers out of a solar system in seconds and stopping a whole planet from going kaboom. Oh, and you know how Obi-Wan tore apart Grievous' armor with his bare hands in Revenge of the Sith? The same armor designed to survive Starship cannons. It withstood a blast that annihilated a subterranean city and almost collapsed the surface of a planet. I seriously doubt Obi is physically strong enough to rip that armor apart, but apparently the Force is. Even Kamui wasn't a reliable option, since Kenobi's reaction speed was nearly 70,000 times faster than Kakashi's. Damn. More than quick enough to avoid Kamui, especially with his precognition. But we can hear you shouting in the back, what about Kakashi's dual Mangekyo Sharon gun that Obito gave him? And the perfect Susano! It's difficult to justify granting those to Kakashi at all, because they aren't really his. He could only use them when Obito's spirit briefly possessed his body. Even if he did, the results probably wouldn't change much. Remember that Kip guy who moved a black hole? Yeah, he was directly compared to Obi-Wan by Luke himself. If we're to take that at face value, this means Kenobi could theoretically call upon the Force to exert nearly 14 petatons of TNT. Way more than what Kakashi was packing. And even then, Obi-Wan could just crush his organs. Shit, man, don't mess around with Jedi. I know it can seem strange to hear about Jedi being this powerful and deadly, but think of it this way. Part of the reason why the Jedi Code is so strict is because of this immense power at their fingertips. The Code tries to keep them, uh, civilized in a way. But when you enter a death battle, throw those morals out the window. We're looking for who wins a no-holds-barred fight to the death. Kakashi had many impressive tools, tricks, and mm. techniques, but Kenobi's brilliant speed, overwhelming force, and greater level of power won this bout. In the end, Obi won. The winner is Again, he goes with that. Yes. So we we predicted it. Yeah, but I mean, I thought it was going to be much closer than that. Well. But I, I get it. I mean, it makes sense to me. But then again, I don't know that much about the Naruto character. So. Well, in terms of the most powerful Naruto characters, Kakashi is up there. I'd say he's high B, if not A tier. I mean, S tier, that's like Naruto, Sasuke, and like the other, like the other Jinchuriki, uh, Jinchuriki being people who are possessed by the, uh, by the nine, one of the nine, uh, like animal spirits. Mm -hmm. And Naruto's possessed by one. He's possessed yes. by the ninth one, or the, uh, ninth one, the QB, the Firefox, which is the most powerful. And, um, yeah. It's, uh, <laughs> it, against a Jedi, though, that has, so much at their disposal. As almost near infinite a well of power that the QB could give Naruto, um, I think, I think Obi-Wan would have, would beat him too. Yeah. I mean, there's just so much a Jedi has at their disposal with their power. And you see, this is something that they have shown more in like the animated series, like Clone Wars animated series and Rebels, but they haven't shown as much in the movies. Like the closest we've gotten 
has been uh, has been like okay. When the Force was first introduced in the original Star Wars trilogy, it was limited. Mm-hmm. Very limited. And a lot of that is due to the time in which it was made. It was 1977. Yeah. So uh, even with a huge, massive budget, which they did get a much bigger budget in the second and third film, and thus were able to pull off a lot more stuff, still, showing stuff with the Force equivalent to pulling a Star Destroyer down would be very difficult to do and pull off. Yes. As as we progress through the growth of the Star Wars lore with Clone Wars, official books, and everything like that, we've been able to see what Jedis are capable of when they're not tied down in real world, like, like in live action scenarios. Yeah. See, animated... Uh, have you seen that one fight scene that uh, was uh, Mace Windu taking on the droid army? No, I haven't. It is amazing, and it's one of the best animated sequences I've ever seen. And don't get me wrong, Sam Jackson's a bad motherfucker. It, it, as a matter of fact, I think every time I say Sam Jackson, I have to make reference to bad motherfucker, because, <laughs> let's just be honest, he's Sam freaking Jackson. Samuel L., dude. Samuel L. Jackson. <laughs> So, <clears throat> um, but as Star Wars lore has gotten more and more fleshed out, the more powerful the being, like, the Force users have been shown to be. And it's crazy how much power certain Force users, both Jedi and Sith, mm-hmm. can pull on. Crazy how quickly those powers have been given yes. to some. Oh, boy. Anyway. <laughs> yeah, that's... That's a whole thing. I mean... <laughs> I, complain I, I was. I, I know, didn't really mean to stir lo- that pot. Logic just, of fi- uh, lo- try to logic of fi- all you want. Oh, oh, you know Kylo Ren was shot by a friggin' blaster. Yeah. I know. He still should have whipped Ray's ass. I'm sorry. <sighs> Alright. Anyway, <laughs> I'm, I'm done. I am done. I'm done complaining about Star Wars, like, the new the new trilogy. I've actually come across people who don't have a problem with it. Quinn doesn't have a problem with it. Of course, Quinn is new to the whole Star Wars franchise, so... I just fresher, don't give a fresher, shit anymore. I, I know. Mean, there's been better stuff come out. I mean, Rebel 1 was great. Mandalorian's great. Oh, yeah, Rogue One was awesome. Or, yeah, Rogue One. Uh, um, Star, Star Wars... Uh, 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 the Mandalorian has been amazing. The Mandalorian, dude. <coughs> the child is just so precious. Yes. And Mando is a great protagonist. Awesome. And Cara Dune is also a really great character as well. Oh, yeah. They... And, so's, and so's Kreef. I, I, I mean, uh, there's, there's so many great characters and so many great actors playing them. I mean, yeah. Carl Weathers loves being in the Star Wars franchise now. And make, he's just like... Make him do the hand thingy. you. <laughs> <laughs> That was like one of my favorite Star Wars moments in a long time. Make him do the hand thing. Make him do the hand thing. <laughs> and then he goes. <laughs> oh, God. And I can't wait to see what Mandalorian Season 2 is going to be like. Yeah. Because we're getting uh, Rosario Dawson as Ahsoka, which is going to be awesome. Yes, very because, cool. Because uh, that's, you can't do more perfect casting because Rosario Dawson is a huge geek she's a huge star wars fan and she's also very fitting in terms of the look yeah i mean you put her like they've done brush-ups of her what she would look like as ahsoka and it works it it looks amazing and i can't wait to see what she's going to bring to the table and i can't wait to see what what (coughs) can't wait to see what the mandalorian crew is going to do bringing you know now that they pretty much have been given free reign to do whatever the hell they want I mean, God, it's going to be amazing. I can't wait. Anyway, um, yeah, so this was Death Battle. Oh, the Mandalorian lightsaber. Oh, the Darksaber, yeah. Yeah. Well, that's, well, that, yeah. That's, that's something I'm looking forward to seeing, you know. Oh, if he gets his hands on it. Well, I'm wondering why Gideon's got it. I, I guess I mean, we'll have to find out. I We will have to find out because the lore of the Darksaber is very, very tried and true. 
I mean, it was in Rebels. It was in. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's it's been in a lot of lore, and I'm wondering where in the hell Gideon got it. I'm wondering if he made one. I don't know. We'll have to see. Yeah. All right. Well, <clears throat> still recovering. Anyway, that's gonna do it, ladies and gentlemen. This was Death Battle Obi Wan Kenobi versus Kakashi. Uh, let us know what you all thought down in the comments down below. And if you want to see more, you know what to do. You hit that subscribe button. You ring that bell to stay notified. And until next time, I'm Nate. I'm Chad. And we'll see you in the next one, everybody. Uh, peace out.